coming up on Rob on the Road. Oh, check it out. <laughs> Let's go to the zoo. Well, the flamingos are singing for joy. Plus, I love this part of the zoo. It really feels like a safari. Look at these beautiful orangutans. And later, if you want to follow me in, I'm going to stay in between you and the snakes. Come with me on an exclusive behind the scenes tour that you don't want to miss. And I cannot believe we're doing this. It's Rob on the Road, the Sacramento Zoo. And now, Rob on the Road, exploring Northern California. The flamingos are singing for joy because we've got a super fun day for you right now at the Sacramento Zoo, a gem in Northern California. And who better to show us the front row than curator Harrison Adele. Good to see you. Hey, welcome to Sacramento Zoo. Oh, it's so fun to be here already. Just listen to the sounds. Yeah, absolutely. We've got animals calling all day long. Animals are active early in the morning um, and you guys are here at the right time to go meet some of the animals up close. That's fantastic. So tell me what all are we going to see today? Uh, we're going to see a little bit of everything today. So we're going to face your fears in the reptile house. We'll we're talk gonna, about that later. <laughs> we're going to meet some of the birds up close. We'll, uh, we'll catch up with some of the zoo guests here at the zoo also and, and even go behind the scenes to meet some of the animals back in their houses where oh, they spend good. the evening. So some behind the scenes action. Absolutely. I love that. I love to take people along for that. How big is this place? We're a 14 acre facility. One of your goals is to bring all these visitors up close and personal to animals. In fact, that's yeah. part of your mission. Absolutely, yeah. You know, the mission of the zoo is to, to connect people with wildlife and, and hopefully give people an opportunity to, to better understand and, and better appreciate the wildlife that we house here at Sacramento Zoo. Well, there's a lot of wildlife, and we're going to go play with it and see a lot of it. So let's go start with the flamingos. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> Well, you hear them, and <laughs> they're so cool. We're talking about the flamingos that you see when you come right through the gate. Harrison, they're so tall. They are, so the taller ones are, are usually males, and the shorter ones are usually the females, and then we have a huge number of them are sort of right in the middle, so it's sort of hard from a distance to tell whether it's male or female. I mean, look at that one right there in the middle. Yeah. Standing straight up, he is just freaking out about something. Yeah, these guys are American flamingos. This is, again, one of the largest species of flamingos on the planet. They have a very ritualized, series of courtship dances and behaviors that they do. And some of the behaviors you see right now, you'll see them flipping their head back and forth. That's a head flagging behavior. You'll see them stretch the wings out. That's another courtship behavior. Um, and later on in the season, we expect to see what, what we call parading. And you'll literally see the entire flock move together from one spot to another. And it's very ritualized. It's, it's obvious that they're not just walking somewhere. Right. They're moving as a group. And um, you know the hope is, of course, that they will build nests and lay some eggs for us. Mm -hmm. um, the full circle of life here at the zoo. The full circle of life is always represented at the zoo, yeah. Mm -hmm. So these guys have bred here at Sacramento Zoo in the past. We have a flock of about 40 flamingos that call Upper Lake home. Uh, they share their home with our American white pelicans, as well as 12 different species of waterfowl. Um, and these guys are just spectacular birds. I mean, there's not much that I can do to make them look any cooler. They're, they're incredible animals. And I love, Harrison, how some are standing on two feet. Some have this one really cool yeah. legged stance going on. Yep. Uh, is that just behavioral? Yeah, that's a resting behavior for, for a lot of long-legged birds. You'll see them tuck one leg all the way up, and it's a way to sort of give that one leg a rest while they put all the weight on the other one. Um, the thing that's kind of odd about flamingo legs and, and the physiology is that their joints look backwards to us, but what looks like a knee to us is actually part of their ankle. Oh, and really? And their knee is all the way up closer to the body. So oh. what looks kind of backwards and funky to us is, is completely normal for a flamingo. I've never been this close to flamingos and I had no clue how stunningly beautiful they are. Yeah, the colors are incredible and these guys get a lot of the coloring from the vitamins in their diet. Um, you know, in the wild they eat a lot of algae and shrimp and, and a lot of their food has high vitamin A and E in it and that's what gives them that brilliant coloring. Now what is over here preening itself? <laughs> Those are our American white pelicans. <laughs> the big guy in the front is Zamboni, the little guy at the back is Monty. These are two rehabilitated pelicans that could not go back to the wild because of wing injuries that oh, no. prevent them from flying. 
Um, so the zoo gave them a second chance of life? Exactly, yeah. These guys were uh, rehabilitated at a facility up in Montana, but obviously the injuries prevented them from, from surviving out in the wild. So they came to live here at Sacramento Zoo, and we hope that people will be maybe inspired to learn more about birds and, and change their own behaviors a little bit to, to better serve wildlife. And there's ducks here too. I see all kinds of little ducks scurrying around. Yep, some of them are natives who just hang out because the food is good and there's not many predators. <laughs> natives? Okay. Yeah. A lot of them are, are collection birds who have lived their, their whole lives here too. So uh, we have 12 different species of waterfowl that share the different lakes here at the zoo too. Well, the lake is beautiful and so is the surroundings. And all around this area are hundreds of animals. So yeah. let's go. Yeah, Okay. He doesn't really care about you. He's like, as long as I see the glove, I'm good. He didn't even look at me. Nope. And wow. that's where our training is paying off. We don't want him to pay attention to the visitors. We want him to just pay attention to the handler, and that's it. And we're doing a lot of different things with building reinforcement history. So if he wants to land somewhere other than our glove, we'll send him to a tree, or there he goes, off into a tree. And he lands up there. He can sit up there. He has his radio antenna on, so we can track him if we lose sight of him. But watch, Burke will call him right back down and he will drop right out of the this tree. This is fascinating, Laura. And he comes right is on Is all of that training? It's all training. Well, welcome to East Africa, right here in the middle of Sacramento. Here are the giraffes, and they are beautiful. They are beautiful, yeah. We house uh, reticulated and Maasai giraffes here at the Sacramento Zoo. What does that mean? These guys are two different types of giraffes from East Africa. So these guys would be found in Somalia, Kenya, Tanzania. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, the animal collection here is pretty diverse. We have animals from lots of different continents. Uh, our African animal collection includes the giraffes, our grevy, zebras, African lions, a number of different animals. And we're gonna see all of those. And this, this giraffe feeding station is exquisite. And look how people can just just get right up close to the giraffes. In fact, you let people feed them at a certain point during the day every day. Yep, that's correct. This is the uh, Tall Wonders Giraffe Deck. Uh, when we redesigned this exhibit and reopened it, we wanted people to be able to get eye level with a giraffe and see them up close and personal. So uh, depending on the season, we offer one or two giraffe feedings every single day so people can get up close and personal and meet our giraffes individually. There's something really beautiful to see these people's reactions as they're feeding the giraffes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think there's something about giraffes. They're, they are beautiful animals. They're non-threatening. Kids are fascinated with them because they're so big. Um, and for a little kid who, you know, spends a lot of time in the city to come meet a giraffe eye to eye and have it right in front of you is an is a incredible experience. And so you're going to take us shortly behind closed doors up in the barn to show us how to get up close and personal with a giraffe too. Yeah, absolutely. We wanted to show you guys the uh, behind the scenes here at the zoo, give you an idea I of how that. hard the animal keepers and the keepers aid volunteers to work to provide day-to-day -day care for a collection of 500 and some odd animals here at Sacramento wow. Zoo. I love behind the scenes, so <laughs> let's go take a look. Sounds good. So we're behind the giraffe exhibit. What's this fella's name? This is Chifu. Chifu. Okay. This is our, our male Maasai giraffe. Male Maasai. We've got some food. Yep. Let's see if we can lure them in. Yeah, we'll go check out the barn. Okay. Follow me upstairs. So we can get face to face, huh? Well, we'll see if they want to come inside and check us out. They usually do. Harrison, this is beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, this is our giraffe barn. This is where the giraffes spend the night and during oh, the they winter. They stay in here at night. They do. They come in at nighttime. And, you know, in the colder months, uh, we want to keep them nice and toasty warm because they're from tropical Africa. So we keep the barn a, a constant temp for them. And right now we're up in the hayloft, which is the top level. So this is where, yeah, well, this is where we store all the grass hay and oat hay and straw for all of our hoofed stock here at the zoo. And it also gives a great vantage point of the giraffes when they come in. So we'll see if one or two of them is going to come in and investigate. Normally, they're curious about anybody who's in their barn. So how will they know we're in here? Oh, oh, oh they'll hear us. Check it out. <laughs> Now you'll like me. It's when all about in, the food. when in doubt, coax them with food. 
This is just breathtaking. They're incredible animals, aren't they? They're so, wow, well, they're strong. Yeah, very strong. You'll see she's got that row of teeth on the bottom that help her to, to pull leaves off of the tree branch. Look at her and showing that tongue off. in action. Hi. Let's see if we can show you the tongue. A lot of people assume that our animals come from the wild, and I think giraffes are a great example. We have a herd of five giraffes here at Sacramento Zoo. Mm -hmm. uh, our group of five were born at various zoos in the country, including Milwaukee, Colorado Springs, San Diego, and Los Angeles zoos. So they're all from, they're born in zoos. Yeah, 90 plus percent of the animals that you see in an AZA accredited zoo are born in a zoo somewhere. I think that's important to bring up, Harrison, because I think that a lot of people are under the impression that zoos just get animals from the wild, and that's not the case anymore. No, you know, we, we try and be as, as careful as possible about where animals are coming from. We wanna make sure that our populations are sustainable and that we're not having to, to take animals out of the wild. So we pay a lot of attention to, to breeding behaviors and, and making sure that we're managing genetics appropriately and managing the population so that we don't produce too many animals. I would assume if they do come from the wild, it's because they're endangered. Yeah, there are some cases of, of animals where we've brought animals in from the wild specifically to, to set up a breeding program. Um, California condors are a great example of that. There are some animals like our pelicans here at the zoo that are here because they can't survive in the wild due to an injury. And there's some animals in captivity that, that came from the wild originally. Well, Sky, you have been so sweet to do this interview with us. <laughs> <laughs> to be and fair, we didn't ask her to do much except <laughs> come have a snack, eat. but that, that works for drafts, so. Well, this has been a wonderful experience, and there's so much more to see here at the zoo today. So, Sky, we're going to let you eat, and we'll see you later, sweetie. Happy, happy to oblige as long as there's good food involved. So pretty. We're back outside now with more of the East African exhibit. And look at the beautiful zebras over here eating. Yeah, these are our Grevy's zebras. Uh, these guys are a critically endangered species. There aren't many of them left out in the wild. They're found in a really restricted small habitat in Kenya. Um, and they're suffering from a lot of issues. Hunting is still an issue for zebras out in the wild. Mm. Uh, they compete with livestock for space and for food. Uh, and oftentimes when it's a battle, you know, over territory or space between humans and animals, animals are the ones who, who lose out. So these guys are a great conservation story. We're, we're working really closely with uh, the species survival plan for these guys. And we also uh, put a lot of effort and, and funding towards conservation projects in the field to try and preserve habitat for grevy zebras out in Kenya. And we've got a new little friend coming over here. <laughs> this is one of our ostriches. <laughs> um, she spends a lot of time with the zebras. She may actually think she's a zebra. Uh, <laughs> really? These guys, these guys in the wild often hang out with antelope and zebras, uh, and they all kind of share duties and responsibilities. So, you know, the idea in the wild is if if uh, I don't notice the lion, you might. So, oh, okay. you know, with more on the lookout for predators, it's it's beneficial for, for African animals to spend time in, in big herds and big groups. And I've noticed that today because as we walked up, the giraffes immediately started checking us out. The zebras, this one did the same really? thing. And they're just so, they're such curious animals. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, they're incredible. They, they, I think, sometimes enjoy watching the people as much as we enjoy watching them too. Do they know you? Uh, you know, some of the animals definitely recognize me. Depends on the animal. Uh, you know, with the giraffes, I think they they do key in visually. They look for people they recognize. They also listen to your voice to see if it's if it's a voice they recognize. Uh, for some of the other animals, like our, our apes, our chimps, definitely uh, pick out faces from the crowd and can recognize an individual keeper or a, a volunteer that they know. All right. Well, let's go see. I know that there's some really beautiful animals right around the corner. Sounds good. Let's go check that out. I love this part of the zoo. It really feels like a safari. Look at these beautiful orangutans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are our Sumatran orangutans. We have a couple of different species of apes that live here at Sacramento Zoo, including our chimpanzees, our gibbons, and, and these guys. Um, we find that a lot of local university groups and a lot of school groups love to come out and observe primates here because you can see a lot of natural social behaviors like grooming. Um, yes, because look, look how they're grooming each other. Mm -hmm. What is that? 
Well, it's a, a, we call it an affiliative behavior. It's a behavior that reinforces bonds between animals in the social group. Orangs are not found in big social groups in the wild. They usually have their own territories that sometimes overlap. Um, in a species like chimps, you see really different behaviors because they do live in big extended family groups. Um, and so, you know, the behaviors are really different, but it's an opportunity for people to see some of those different behaviors here uh, in person and, and observe for themselves, which is pretty, pretty incredible. You know, I love how they swing. I mean, this, this exhibit really gives them a lot of fun. Yeah, you know, it's a challenge sometimes to provide animals with enough mental stimulation and, and emotional stimulation and things to do. Um, it keeps keepers on their toes. We, uh, we provide a lot of our animals with environmental enrichment. We try and change the environment from day to day so that they don't get bored, uh, present food items in different ways each day, give them structures to climb on or explore um, to keep their minds active. Mm -hmm. That's what you're doing with the chimpanzees today too. Yeah. Boy, those animals are active. Yes, they are. They definitely keep us. And they can get loud. Yes, they, yes, they, <laughs> yes, they can. <laughs> they're incredible. They're, they're great animals. We enjoy working with them very much. Who is this, Harrison? <laughs> this is, these are, our, <laughs> these are our Red River hogs. Hi. These are JD and Daisy, and they are good pigs. They're so cute. Were these African? These are, yeah, these are Central African Red River hogs. They share their exhibit with our Eastern Bongo, which are big antelope that we're going to go down and meet in a minute. Hi. Hello. You guys are so handsome. And can we feed them a carrot or not? We're going to feed our bongos carrots, and these guys are going to pick up all of the scraps. I <laughs> oh, see look your at mouth. those teeth! Yeah, humongous tusks. Um, obviously, if you're living in an African forest, you got leopards and other predators to deal with. Those tusks are a pretty good way of protecting yourself. These guys are. Uh, Found all over Central Africa in open foresty areas and mud look, wallows and... Look at that snout. Yeah, amazing snout. And you know, it's perfect for rooting around and digging up roots and tubers and those sorts of things. These guys will sometimes even eat, you know, a mouse or a lizard if they catch it, but a lot of their food is fallen fruit and roots and things like that. Can they run fast? Yeah, they're very fast. Mm -hmm. And she'll probably, both of them will probably follow us down the road right, as we see. walk down to Bongo's. Let's see what happens. All right, would you like a carrot? Want a carrot? I would like a carrot. Come on. Come on, piggers. All right, let's go. Come on, kids. They're cute. Daisy! Daisy! You said we have behind us here another one of your favorite type of animals. <laughs> I, have a, I have a lot of favorite animals at the zoo. What is this? These are Eastern Bongo. Come here, Bongo. Who is screaming up a storm? Those are our chimps who are just across the path on the front side of the exhibit. OK, so can we feed these? Yeah, I was going to say in, in just a moment or two, the hope is that they will be enticed by a carrot. They got to stretch and wake up a little bit because it's siesta time for them. Uh, Where are they from? Eastern Bongo are from Kenya, and their Kenya. entire geographic range is one little spot in the mountain ranges of Kenya. They're, they're a critically endangered animal. They're found almost nowhere on Earth except this little tiny strip of mountains in Kenya. Is that why there's a conservation effort for that's, them? Yeah, that's exactly why. So um, these guys are a really a successful species survival plan, and we were lucky to have one of our young bongo go back to Kenya. Um, oh, really? Yeah, and, and we do get updates every once in a while from biologists in Kenya on how that animal's doing. Well, that shows it's that the it's ultimate, working. the ultimate payoff. Here we go. Let's see if it'll it'll eat from you. I know. Good girl. Oh, What's her name? This is Victoria. She's actually the mother of the animal that went back to Kenya. Wow. Here, Victoria. The, Here pigs, Victoria. the pigs would love any piece that she drops. So if any piece of the carrot drops, don't worry about it. The cleanup crew has got you covered. This huge animal is so gentle. Yeah, absolutely. And these guys, as big as they are, when they're in African rainforest, they almost disappear. They've got those beautiful stripes on their sides, and those help them to blend in in forests. And they can be amazingly quiet when they need to be. When they're moving around in the forest, you, you really don't even notice them. I, I, I can totally see that, because they're just so calm. Well, now it runs off, but. Well, I mean, that's because our, our male is going to come push her out of the way and steal some carrots, too. Okay. So this is Ferdinand. This is Hi, our bull. Ferdinand. And he's still a fairly young bull. He's going to get much bigger. They're beautiful animals in general. Will they bite? 
He will, potentially okay. bite you. <laughs> we like to say that anything with a mouth can bite. So we always want to make sure you know where the teeth are at all times. In there. Look at those horns. Yeah, his horns are huge and they are still growing because he's still fairly young. So they'll get even bigger. They're just beautiful. Yeah. He's That's one of the guy. things that I, I keep feeling from each animal we've gotten up close to today mm -hmm. is that each of them has their own literally like majestic energy. Yeah. Yeah, you know, if you take the time to, to really understand an animal, every one of them has got something unique and, and incredible about them. Whether it's some cool adaptation or, or something aesthetically gorgeous, it just sometimes takes people more time to figure that out. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that keeps your job constantly fascinating to you. Absolutely. That, that thing hanging there is a lemur, right? <laughs> yes, it is. Okay, and what is the lemur's name? <laughs> These are black and white roughed lemurs. Okay. Uh, we house a group of three right now. It's it's mom, dad, and their kid. Uh, Jacques and Ravenala are the adult pair, um, and we're actually going to go in and do some training with them, with their keeper today. So Janine's on our way over in a few minutes. How do you remember all of their names? Uh, well, it's a little bit like an extended family. So this same lemur will be headed to the veterinary hospital here that you have at the zoo, yep. which is a partnership with UC Davis. Yeah. Tell me about this program. Yeah, we built uh, a brand new veterinary hospital about seven years ago. That so people can watch through the window. Yeah, it's, it's a very unique uh, facility. Uh, it's a unique facility because you can see most of the procedures as they go on through the windows. I can't believe we're gonna do this, Harrison. But you said the mission here is to get people up close and personal to animals, and we're going in the snake cage. That's the goal. We're gonna face our fears. We're gonna have you head in. We'll meet some of our snakes up close and some uh, of our frogs. If you wanna follow me in, I'm gonna stay in between you and the snakes. Thank you. And you're gonna be totally safe. <laughs> so come on in. I cannot believe we're doing this. You're gonna be fine. And we're gonna head all the way into the exhibit. Just follow my footsteps Ugh. all the way across. Okay, is that is that thing gonna come towards us? No, we've got two two snakes in here. One of them is a green tree python. The other is a carpet python. Both of them are from New Guinea and Australia. And we're gonna come to the far side of this. I have a snake hook with me just in case. Oh dear God! Anybody moves towards us, but I'm pretty confident that they're not gonna come anywhere near us. We're gonna make you some confident. room. Well, you know, as confident as I can be. But kudos to you for being brave enough to come in, because I know that you are a little bit nervous. Yeah, I think. Around snakes. But okay. I, I wanted to bring you in here, because I think this is part of what the zoo does. You know, we, we want people to connect with wildlife and to appreciate wildlife in new ways. And snakes get a bad rap. Snakes are, are really incredible animals, but a lot of people are nervous around them. Well, I'm, I, I will be honest with you. I'm mortified of snakes. I mean, I have a severe phobia of it. It's, yeah. And I guess this is a good thing that you bring people in here because, I mean, I know everyone just doesn't come in here, but it does help you kind of deal with your fears. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we want snakes to be out on exhibit. We want people to, to be as fascinated with them as we are. Um, these snakes are, are mellow animals. They're, they're not interested in being aggressive towards us. So we're pretty safe in here, but again, you know, we, we hope that people will come in and, and be as interested and intrigued and fascinated as we are with these animals who are really beautiful once you take the time to get to know them and, and understand them better. Can that thing jump at us? You know, anything can bite, anything can move around pretty quickly if it needs to. Um, this is a green tree python and they live up in the, the trees a lot of the time. They're an arboreal snake. Most of her food in the wild would be small birds and maybe a rodent every once in a while. 
since you are not a rodent, you're pretty safe. So <laughs> nice. you, should, you should be just fine in here. Where is the other one? Our carpet python is kind of down on the ground right now in a hiding spot behind the log. He's a big guy. He's one of the biggest snakes that we have here at the zoo. How big? Um, if we stretched him all the way out, he's probably close to six feet or so. Oh, my goodness. And he's a pretty heavy snake. But again, he's another one who, you know, in the wild would be eating a lot of rodents. And that's one of the things that we love to share with people. If, if we didn't have snakes on this planet, the number of rodents would be out of control. Um, snakes serve a really important purpose in the ecosystem, keeping rodent populations in check. Um, and here in California, you know, as far as wild snakes go, there's only one that we really have to be nervous about. Those are rattlesnakes. Mm -hmm. And they go out of their way to, to tell us where they're at and to warn us that, that they're nervous. Um, you know, overall, I think the more people learn about snakes, the more comfortable you'll, you'll be with them. You know, one of the goals of this show for me is to take people where they otherwise may not be able to go, to Absolutely. bring out the explorer in them. Yeah. So this is for you. <laughs> I would have never gotten in a snake pit had you not been in here with me too, Harrison. <laughs> well, I'm glad we got you brave and, and got you in here okay. to meet our snakes up close. Okay. I think that's really, really positive. It's and, a good first step. And now we can get out. Okay. okay. <laughs> We have had a marvelous day with you here at the Zoo Harrison. We've seen so many smiles, so many animals. We've had really close, fun encounters with, with uh, animals and tried some things that I thought I'd never try before. <laughs> and, you know, at the end of the day, though, how do you feel when you go home from here? You know, we always compare uh, the zoo community here to our family away from home. And when you spend this much time with the animals and with the staff that we're working closely with, it, it does feel a lot like family. So, you know, every morning when we come to work, we're working with our family. Every afternoon we go home to our other family at home. So uh, it's it's an incredible place to work. We're, we're lucky to be here. And I don't know very many people that can say that about their work. It's We have a lot of good days. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful, and this has been one. Good. Yes, Good. Harrison Adele here <laughs> at the Sacramento Zoo. Thank you so much for a great day. You're welcome. Thanks for coming out. Yep. Okay, watch this. This is a kookaburra. Cool. Oh, what is it? <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> Wait, is this thing gonna bite me? He might. Probably. Oh, <laughs> To order a DVD copy of this program, call 888-814-3923 or visit robontheroad.org.